Uh, hello everyone, my name is Szymon Romik. Uh, I am a software engineer um, currently focusing on programming persistent memory in C++. Uh, together with my colleague Igor Horonzewicz, uh, we will be presenting C++ persistent containers in PMDK. Uh, and here is an agenda for this session. Uh, so I will start with uh, a short introduction to persistent memory development kit, uh, PMDK for short. Uh, and then I will describe briefly uh, the main features and goals of Lipimum OBJ library uh, and present a short uh, usage example. I will explain then uh, main goals for persistent containers in the library and talk about our design decisions. Uh, after that, Igor will present our containers portfolio focusing on algorithms, uh, on media layout and concurrency issues. So let me start. Uh, okay, now you might think that uh, writing uh, software uh, for persistent memory is difficult, and you would be right. Uh, this is why Persistent Memory Development Kit was uh, introduced. Uh, PMDK has evolved uh, to be a large collection of open source libraries and tools for application developers and system administrators. Uh, to simplify managing and accessing Persistent Memory devices. Uh, it was uh, developed uh, alongside support for Persistent Memory in operating systems, making sure uh, that the libraries uh, take advantage of all the features exposed through OS interfaces. Uh, PMDK is uh, vendor agnostic, uh, open source, uh, performance optimized and tuned set of libraries. Uh, which abstracts away some of the low-level architecture details, uh, like cache flushing instructions, for example. Uh, this presentation uh, will be about the library called Lipium OBJ C++, and uh, this is a C++ uh, bindings library for a uh, library written in C, Lipium OBJ. Uh, now uh, I will describe uh, briefly uh, the main features for uh, this library. Uh, I will start with uh, full, man full management API. So personal memory is usually exposed by the OS through a DAX enabled uh, file system. And memory mapping is used to take advantage of by addressability of uh, PMEM. Uh, however, mmap does not guarantee uh, the address of the mapping, especially if uh, address space layout randomization is enabled. So Lithium OBJ abstracts away uh, the underlying storage, providing unified APIs for managing files. Uh, the entire library adapts to what type of storage is being used and does the right thing for correction. Uh, this means that msync when DAX is not supported. Uh, it also works seamlessly for uh, DevX devices. Uh, and the pool is a class template where the template parameter uh, is the type of the root object. It supports uh, basic uh, operations like open for opening an existing uh, OBJ pool, create, close, and root. Uh, method. Uh, root method uh, returns a persistent pointer to a root object associated with uh, a pool, uh, but I will talk about the root objects uh, later on. Let me now move to the persistent pointer. Uh, so, like I said, the base pointer of the mapping can change between application instances, and this means any row pointer between two memory uh, locations uh, can become uh, invalid. Uh, so we must either fix all the pointers at the start of the application, but it is potentially terabytes of data to go through, or we can use a custom data structure with, which uh, isn't relative to the base point. And this is exactly what uh, persistent pointer in, in Lipium OBJ does. So Lipium OBJ provides a 16-byte offset pointers, which uh, contain of an offset relative to the beginning of the mapping. Uh, it is a random access iterator. It has primitives for flashing contents to persistence, 
However, it does not manage object lifetime and does not automatically add the contents of the uh, object percent pointer points to uh, to the transaction. But it does add it to the transaction. Uh, Igor will talk more about percent pointer, uh, its optimizations, and uh, cell relative pointer uh, later on. Uh, Another um, fundamental uh, concept behind Lithium OBJ is a uh, root object. Uh, so all data structures of an application should start uh, at the root object. It has user-defined size, it always exists, and it is initially uh, zero. And applications should make sure uh, that all objects uh, are always reachable through some path uh, that starts at the root objects. Uh, unreachable objects are efficiently uh, present more release otherwise. Uh, in Lithium OBJ, uh, we have uh, transactional API, and uh, Lithium OBJ transactions provide uh, uh, ACID uh, properties. Uh, so it means atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Atomicity means that the transaction either succeeds or fails uh, completely. Uh, consistency means that the uh, transaction transforms PMM OBJ pool from one consistent state to another, and this means that a pool won't get corrupted by a transaction. Isolation means that transactions can be executed uh, as if the operations were executed serially on the pool. Uh, this is optional uh, and require user provided logs. And durability means that uh, once a transaction is committed, uh, it remains committed even in the case of system failures, and this property is guaranteed by the uh, media itself. Uh, transactions in Lithium OBJ are undo log based, uh, so in case of interruption, uh, it is rolled back or completed upon next pull open. Uh, the semantics uh, we use uh, took an uh, std function objects uh, as transactional body. So there is no explicit transaction commit uh, when the uh, function uh, body ends, the transaction is being committed. Uh, this API is available with every C++11 compliant compiler. Uh, the transactions throw an exception when the transaction is aborted. They take an arbitrary number of logs and they can be nested. And uh, in this case, when they are nested, the inner transaction is flattened to the outer one. Uh, and we have also allocations in Lithium OBJ. Mm. We uh, have written our own allocator from the scratch. Uh, it is uh, human aware. Uh, it is designed to perform uh, and key to perform best with PMM and keeps fragmentation issues uh, in mind. Uh, the API looks like in this code snippet. Uh, we have a function uh, make persistent. The syntax is similar to std make shared. Uh, the allocation must be called inside transaction scope. There is also a delete persistent uh, function which uh, deallocates uh, memory. Uh, and there are no uh, similar std uh, counterparts for delete persist. So the overall goal um, of the uh, LPM OBJ uh, uh, for C++ is to focus modifications on volatile programs, on data structures, and not on the code. In other words, uh, we want you to be able to modify your structs and classes with only slight modification to your function. So here's an example. Um, it is a volatile queue uh, and uh, push method. Uh, you can see how many changes are needed uh, with Lithium OBJ C++ to make Lithium error. Uh, you basically uh, modify the structures. You started using persistent pointers instead of volatile pointers. You are adding something called P property template class. Uh, in this way, 
the values you want to modify in transactions are snapshotted automatically and you have to also add a transaction uh, scope to your code to mark a uh, range of codes uh, as being executed inside the transaction. Uh, our goal for Lithium OBJ C++ bindings is to create a friendly and less error-prone API for personal memory programming. Uh, and even with personal memory pool allocators, convenient interface for creating and managing transactions, auto snapshotting class, templates, and small person pointers, designing an application with personal memory usage uh, might still prove uh, challenging without features that C++ programmers are used to. Uh, so the natural step forward to make persistent programming easier is to provide programmers with efficient and useful containers. So code reuse is a common programming principle and, uh, and we took it to the heart when some time ago we experimented with personal memory containers by introducing a custom percent allocator for uh, lib C++ uh, STL containers. Uh, but as it turns out, uh, there were some hard to overcome obstacles with using existing STL containers. And the main two downsides are uh, first, implementation details. So STL containers do not use algorithms optimal from personal memory programming point of view, and PM containers should have durability and consistency properties, while not every STL method guarantees strong exception safety. Uh, personal memory containers should be designed with awareness on uh, the awareness of fragmentation limitations. And the second issue is memory layout. Basically, STL does not guarantee that container layout will remain unchanged in new library versions. So this is why we implemented uh, our own uh, containers uh, with optimized on media layouts and algorithms to fully exploit uh, uh, personal memory potential. Uh, and uh, their methods uh, should guarantee atomicity, consistency, and durability. Uh, besides specific internal implementation details, uh, PMM containers have well-known STL-like interface and work with STL algorithms. Since they will extend uh, LPM OBJ C++ projects, the goal is to implement them with usage of LPM OBJ C++ bindings and make them easily accessible with its interface. Uh, some uh, of the associative uh, containers implemented in LPM OBJ C++ uh, are exposed to another PMDK library called PMKV, which is Persistent Local Key Value Data Store, as a storage engine. And in this code snippet, you can see a basic persistent vector usage uh, example. Uh, the allocation must be called uh, in a transaction. And uh, after that, you can use it almost like a volatile vector from the standard library. Uh, all methods which may alter containers' uh, properties uh, use transactions internally uh, and guarantee atomicity and uh, strong exception state. Uh, and now uh, Igor will uh, describe uh, specific containers and uh, will talk uh, about uh, the implementation details. Okay. Thanks, Simon. So my name is Igor, and now I will walk you through our containers from Lipium up to CPP. Uh, I will also say a few words at the end about uh, performance problems we encountered and some optimizations uh, we made. So as you can see on this slide, uh, we have seven containers in our current LPM of CPP version and three of them are experimental. So uh, those are the ones in blue. And this means that the layout and API of those containers might change for all other um, containers. We guarantee both API and layout stability. And uh, as you can also see, some of the containers are compatible with SDL. Uh, some of them have uh, non-standard extensions. So this is mainly true for our concurrent data structures. Um, I will skip describing the most basic containers like string and vector, and I will go and start with a segment vector. So the interface for segment vector is pretty similar for uh, STD vector from standard library. 
as you can see on this code snippet. However, it holds data in separately allocated segments and which are never reallocated. It can be used to solve different problems by customizing it using uh, different policies. So uh, you can use it to bypass 16 gigabyte allocation limit, which is currently uh, there in PMDK. You can also use that to limit external fragmentation or uh, it can also provide you stable iterators. Okay, so as I said, uh, PMOP segment vector can be specialized using different policies. On this slide, you can see uh, two different variants of segment vector. In the first one, we are using PM object vector to hold segments, and each segment is of fixed size. Uh, this kind of segment vector can help you minimize external fragmentation. Uh, since all segments are of the same size, allocator has a much easier job finding uh, free memory for later allocations. Uh, in the second example, we are using fixed size array to hold segments, which are vectors. The segment sizes is increasing exponentially, uh, which allows to get better performance. Uh, this kind of segment vector uh, gives you also stable indexing operator. And what I mean by that is that uh, since the PMOP array is not reallocated, one thread can append entries to the segment vector and other threads can read all previous elements using, iper using indexing operator. So there are no races. And we use this variant to implement something we call persistent TLS. So this is not yet a public API. This is based on TBB enumerable thread specific structure. And uh, it basically consists of a local clear begin and end methods. Uh, the most important one is local. It gives you a memory local to a thread. What is important here is that local does not need locks in most cases. So it makes use of the indexing operator of segment vector and a thread can just read from a segment vector using its ID as an index. Uh, percent ls is used, for example, to Im implement a distributed size variable. This is especially important for concurrent data structures where we cannot update global size in a consistent manner without locks. And this is because we cannot use transactions with atomic variables. So one solution is to use a per thread size, which can be modified as part of a transaction, along with operations like insert or erase. And this per those per thread sizes can be then summed up on recovery. Uh, in our data structures, for example, in concurrent map, uh, we also have a volatile global, global size, uh, which is updated using normal atomic instructions, so that calling size is pretty fast. Other use case for percent TLS is uh, using it to implement redo lock. Uh, I will talk about it uh, later when describing a concurrent map implementation. So let's now move on to the first concurrent container, which is PMOPT concurrent hash map. Um, it uses per bucket read write lock to guarantee insert and insert, erase, and find, find methods thread safety. And so each operation in concurrent hash map does the following. It finds the required bucket using the hash, uh, logs the bucket, and work with that under the lock. Uh, we solve collisions in this data structure using chaining. And one important feature of this concurrent hash map is that it uses lazy rehashing. So when we reach a threshold, for example, when number of elements is larger than the number of buckets, we only allocate new segment, but do not move the data itself. Instead, all finds and inserts, which end up in, in this newly allocated segment, uh, detect that the bucket is not rehashed and do this rehashing lazily. Uh, because of that, we can guarantee that the latency remains at a stable level uh, during inserts and finds. Our next concurrent data structure is concurrent map. It is based on a concurrent skip list implementation from TBB and its average uh, computation complexity is similar to tree-like data structures uh, 
for example, B-tree or binary trees. Uh, skip list is basically a multi-layer linked list uh, where the bottom layer is an ordinary list and each higher layer acts as an express lane for the list below. Uh, in our implementation, we use lock, locks to uh, implement write-write synchronization. However, uh, for read-write synchronization, we use atomic operations. Because of that, uh, we can guarantee that the search is weight-free. So uh, let's look how the search operation actually works. Uh, in this example, we try to find element with key nine. Uh, a search begins at the dummy node head and proceeds in the topmost layer until nil or element with a greater key is found. We then descend to the lower level and repeat the procedure. Um, and reading all pointers is done via atomic reads with acquire semantics. Um, since we are using atomic write instructions for synchronization, uh, we cannot use PMDK transactions to guarantee durability uh, or consistency. And um, in this case, consistency in particular means that if any node was seen by a reader before the crash, it should still be visible after the crash, even if it was not fully linked. So even if we only updated uh, some of the previous pointers. To solve this, we are using TLS. So when we first allocate new node, we put that in the TLS and only then uh, loop through all the previous pointers and update them to point to our new node. When this is done, we can safely remove the node from the TLS. This operation is safe because even if the whole procedure is interrupted in the middle, we can still redo the operation on restart. Um, in our current implementation, uh, delete operation is not thread safe. So uh, there is a way to logically delete a node from a skip list in a thread safe manner, but since our reads are lock free, there is problem with object lifetime management. Um, there are some approaches which we could use, uh, for example, memory reclamation using epoch-based reclamation, uh, but this approach and also other approaches uh, can significantly hurt search and insert performance. So for now, we decided not to implement that, and so delete operation uh, is blocking. Um, let's now move on to our single threaded associative container. Uh, so we decided to implement a radix tree, uh, which has some nice properties for a percent memory. And uh, for those who are not familiar, uh, Radix tree uh, contains, consists of internal nodes, which hold array of pointers to children, leaf nodes, which contain the key value pairs, and edges, which represent parts of the key. Uh, and we use those parts to navigate through the Radix tree. To find an element, we just take the first half character or byte of a key and use that to index the children's array. We follow the edge to the child and proceed with the next byte. As you can see on this example on right for Romulus, some bytes might be skipped if there is no ambiguity. And this is called path compression. So in some circumstances, edges can represent multiple bytes. And the important characteristic of Radix tree is that there is no rebalancing. Uh, in some cases, when there is a path compression, we might need to split an edge. But even in that case, this is only one extra allocation and one extra pointer swap. So this is not so costly as rebalancing in uh, B3 or binary trees. Uh, also notice that we only need to compare key twice, not uh, log n times like in tree-like data structures uh, based on comparisons. Uh, the first comparison is done when we are descending the tree to compare with the edges. And the second time is needed when we are actually in the leaf to make sure this is the element we actually want. Uh, because due to the path compression, some bytes might actually be different uh, than our looked for key. And the Radix tree implementation is uh, mostly compatible with STD API 
for SD map. Uh, the difference is for iterators, and obviously we don't have a comparison template parameter uh, since this is not comparison-based data structures. Uh, you can read more about API in the link below. Um, on this slide, you can see an example uh, where we use radix tree with pmopt string as a key. Uh, we do that because we want to store some dynamically sized data. Uh, similar to std string, pmopt string uh, stores its data on the heap. Uh, however, as we all know, persistent memory has higher latency than DRAM, and we want to limit number of pointer references and allocations in our algorithms. So for that purpose, we introduced inline string. Uh, this data structure can hold the data within the same allocation and hence limit the number of the references. On the right, you can see a layout of leaf node for radix string when we are using inline string. And you can see that all the data is stored within the leaf in the same allocation. And by the way, both key and value can be, can be inline strings. Um, okay, so that was the last container I wanted to talk about. Uh, now I will say a few words about a persistent pointer performance problem. Uh, so we got a report some time ago that the referencing our persistent pointer uh, is very slow compared to regular pointers. And this is true, especially if you do that in a loop. And you would expect that the compiler should optimize the code and there should be no significant difference between uh, persistent pointers and regular pointers. However, it turned out that because of the way our persistent pointers are implemented, a uh, compiler has very little optimization opportunities. So on this slide, uh, you can in, in the code snippet, you can see uh, the simplified version of person pointer implementation. Uh, as Shimon already said, person pointer contains of two 8 byte fields. One is pool ID, and the second one is offset within this pool. Uh, the PM object direct method, which you see below, is called every time either the references are persistent pointer. Uh, inside, you can see that uh, we use TLS to cache base address of a pool, which is necessary to avoid costly calls to PMOPT pool by OID, which is lookup in some tree like data structure. Um, because we always read the TLS value, compiler is not able to optimize uh, access in a loop, for example. Uh, in this regard, TLS value is actually very similar to a global value, uh, which can change at any time, also by another thread. And so compiler is not able to optimize this read out. To fix this problem, we introduced a new type of pointer, uh, which is called self-relative pointer. So the main idea is, here is not to store the absolute offset of the data, but rather only a distance between the pointer, pointer itself and the data. On this image, you can see a pointer inside object A, which points to the object B. Uh, the value stored inside the pointer is 2000 because that's the relative distance between the objects. To get a regular runtime pointer, uh, you have to sum up the value of the pointer with the address of the pointer itself. Uh, and you can see that in the code snippet below for the get method. Implementing pointers in such a way makes compiler optimizations possible. And in our benchmarks, the referencing self-relative pointers uh, is basically as fast as a regular pointer. And this can differ in uh, different circumstances. Uh, so some compilers might do a better job optimizing, uh, but in general, this should offer much better performance than persistent pointers. Uh, moreover, uh, for self-relative pointer, we only use eight bytes instead of 16. Of course, there is a draw drawback with that. Uh, with this kind of pointer, you can only reference objects within the same pool. And we got to the end of this presentation. And uh, to sum it all up, designing efficient data structures for present memory is quite a difficult task. 
Uh, however, you don't have to do it all by yourself. Uh, you can use VPM of CPP containers, uh, which are already well tested and optimized for personal memory. Uh, you can also use most of those data structures, especially Radix G concurrent map and concurrent hash map uh, through PMPV, uh, which is a key value storage. And you can also use that through bindings to Java, Python, Python or Node.js. Uh, on this slide, you can see several links which you can uh, go to. I also recommend taking a look at the last link, which is a percent memory programming book. Uh, which has a lot of useful knowledge about designing data structures and general person memory programming. And that will be all. Thanks for your attention.